News, Russian authorities are telling Wagner fighters not to follow their leader, Evgeny Prigozhin, and also to take measures to detain him. That coming as the infamous head of the private Wagner Russian mercenary army is making a stunning claim tonight, accusing Russia's military leadership of killing a, quote, huge amount of his Wagner forces in a strike. That is a claim that Russia denies. We have CNN's Ben Wiedemann on the ground in Ukraine and our Oren Lieberman monitoring at the Pentagon. Ben, I want to go to you first. What can you tell us about this claim from Pogosian and how Moscow is responding tonight? Well, actually, Alex, that's just one of many claims made by Prigozhin OG today that's clearly going to get him in trouble. He started the day with an, a video interview in which he claimed that uh, Russia had no pretext uh, for invading Ukraine last year. Then he went on to make this claim uh, that the Russian military leadership, without specifying who or what exactly, attacked a Wagner base killing dozens of his mercenaries. Now, it's not clear where that base is. Some video is circulating in social media of that base. The Russian defense ministry has said that this is simply not true. Uh, the Russian media, Russian state media, is saying that President Putin is being kept aware of these claims by Wagner and the situation in general, and that, quote, all necessary measures are being being taken. Now, Prigozhin went on to say that the evil being carried out by the Russian military leadership must be stopped. Now, many people are taking this as a call for a coup, although Prigozhin went out, came out later and denied it. Now, as a result of this obvious shock of instability hitting Russia, there are reports on social media that military vehicles have been seen outside the state Duma in Moscow, as well as in the city of Rostov, the Russian city, uh, to the east of here. Now, in reaction to Prigozhin's statements, the FSB, the Russian Federal Security Service, has announced that it has begun criminal proceedings against Prigozhin for organizing armed an armed insurrection. And of, this is, according to the statement from the SSS, FSB, punishable by 12 to 20 years uh, in prison. Now, the Ukrainians are obviously watching this with intense interest. Now, we did see a tweet from the Ukrainian Defense Ministry simply saying, we are watching. Alex? This certainly is an earthquake in uh, Russia's war in Ukraine. Ben Wiedemann, uh, thank you very much. We have new reporting now on the U.S. reaction to this showdown between Russia and the Wagner mercenary group. Here's our Pentagon correspondent, Oren Lieberman. Uh, Oren, what are you being told? Alex, certainly after Ben laid it all out like that, the friction we're seeing between Prigozhin and the Russian military leadership, it's easy to see why U.S. officials are watching this so closely and are tracking this so closely to see how this develops. The U.S. has watched, and we have watched, friction between the two in the past. Threats coming from Prigozhin aimed either at the Russian military or its leadership, Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu or the Chief of General Staff Valery Gerasimov. But one U.S. official tells us there is a sense here that this goes above and beyond that. This isn't the usual rhetoric. There is something different here. There is something perhaps more escalatory here. And that's one of the reasons the U.S. is watching this so closely to see how this develops over the course of the next several hours and days. It's also worth pointing out that Prigozhin has normally attacked Russian military leadership following some Ukrainian battlefield success or breakthrough or tactical success. And it doesn't appear to be the case here. There doesn't appear to have been some sort of Ukrainian success that, that precipitated these sudden threats by Prigozhin. And yet we have seen this friction with what appears to be an increasing frequency. In fact, just early last week, Russia's Ministry of Defense said that private contractors, military contractors would have to sign contracts to try to bring them in line with Russian military leadership and the Russian military itself. And it was Prigozhin who said that Wagner would not be doing that. And so you see that leading into this friction here as the U.S. watches this, Alex. Yeah, the U.S. and certainly the rest of NATO are going to be watching this very, very closely. Orrin Lieberman at the Pentagon, thanks very much. Let's get more now with our military and Russia experts, uh, Colonel uh, Cedric Layton and Dmitry Alperovich. Thank you both for joining me. Dmitry, I want to go to you first. You say that Prigozhin massively overreached today. You're comparing this to gang warfare. Uh, this is very different than what Prigozhin has said before. It is an escalation. What do you think is behind it? 
Well, what Prigozhin has been doing for months now is criticizing, of course, the Ministry of Defense, Minister Shoigu, uh, Chief of General Staff Gerasimov for being incompetent, trying to draw a distinction between his own capable Wagner forces that were able to take Bakhmut by destroying it, and uh, the Russian military that has been uh, suffering loss after loss. But what he couldn't do, and, and the big mistake that he made today, is to go after the pretext for this war. When he announced that this war was launched under false pretenses, he blamed Shoigu for it, but everyone knows that Putin is the one that ultimately made the decision. And thus, he gave the opening to, for Shoigu and others uh, that have hated him for a long time in the Kremlin apparatus, as well as in the FSB, to go after him. And Colonel Layton, as Dimitri noted there, this is a feud that has been brewing for quite some time. Uh, Prigozhin has been lobbing those bombs for, for months. But how do you assess this claim that Prigozhin made that Russian forces, the Russian military, actually targeted and killed many Wagner mercenaries, as Prigozhin claimed? Yeah, Alex, that's a very inflammatory claim under almost any condition that you can imagine. So, uh, you know, what Prigozhin seems to be doing here is upping the ante. He's basically saying uh, this, uh, you know, this this area has uh, gone way beyond what uh, I've intended. Uh, it's gone way beyond what the Russian state uh, should be doing, and the Russian state has killed its own people. Uh, so that, uh, you know, is a very significant I, I think, departure from the messages that we've seen from Prigozhin before. It's much more virulent, uh, much more uh, really part of a campaign that seems to be uh, to, uh, designed to topple the Ministry of Defense, at the very least, and possibly Putin himself. But I don't think it will be successful. So, Colonel, what are you going to be watching for now as the FSB is calling on Wagner fighters to detain Prigozhin? Well, I'm going to be watching for exactly that, Alex, whether or not the, the Wagner forces remain loyal to Prigozhin or whether they switch allegiance uh, to Putin and, and Shoigu. Uh, we've had uh, generals uh, come up on social media that have urged uh, the Wagner group to actually uh, disband and to actually uh, detain, as you mentioned, Prigozhin. We've also had, uh, you know, other uh, members call for a uh, calm in this situation. And, of course, the broadcasts on state television have been, uh, I think, a very significant departure from uh, what we've normally seen when it comes to these kinds of spats. So I'm going to be watching for uh, these kinds of tensions to unfold and whether or not Prigozhin uh, stays a, fr a free man. Dimitri, same question to you. What do you expect the next moves to be? Well, what you're seeing right now is armored vehicles being deployed on the streets of Moscow for the first time since the early 1990s, uh, out of fear, of course, that uh, Wagner may have supporters that may help them uh, orchestrate a coup. So Putin does not want to take any chances. He's deploying not just the FSB and the Russian military, but the Rosgvardia and the National Guard, effectively his Praetorian Guard, uh, hundreds of thousands of men that have armor, that are uh, very loyal to him. So he's got the overwhelming advantage here. I don't expect that Prigozhin and Wagner would be successful here. I don't even expect that they would survive the weekend um, or at least uh, remain free men. Uh, but uh, it's certainly interesting that Putin is very concerned, perhaps for the first time in his presidency, about uh, a potential for a coup. Dimitri, have you seen fractures within Wagner? Would you expect Wagner fighters to heed that call to arrest Prigozhin? I'm not sure if they would arrest him, but certainly if you're a Wagner personnel right now, the last thing you want to do is either be killed by the Russian military and the Roskvardia or be arrested and then potentially be sent again to fight in Ukraine now as a convict yet again. So uh, not a lot of good choices for them. Um, most of them, I would expect, would probably try to disappear and, and try to get home. Uh, Colonel Layton, uh, do you agree with, with Dmitry that uh, Prigozhin's life is now at risk? A absolutely, Alex. I think Dimitri's spot on in this uh, in this case because what you're looking at is not only a power play, but it seems to be a power play done by someone who is not quite ready uh, in terms of the forces that he has at his disposal to actually mount a coup or other uh, you know other type of action of that type. Uh, so I don't think he'll be successful, and I think uh, that uh, his demise may be coming up very shortly. And Dimitri, in terms of what could happen uh, in the coming weeks and days, we're in the middle of this counteroffensive. Putin has acknowledged challenges uh, during this period. Do you think that these developments make it more difficult for Putin to, to spin the realities uh, of how his forces are, are doing on the ground? I don't think so. I think he can present this as a rogue uh, 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 paramilitary uh, contractor, Prigozhin. 
uh, that is uh, trying to actually not even orchestrate a coup against Putin. He's been very careful to promote his support of Putin. He's saying that he wants to clean the uh, Russian military and, and the general staff off of, uh, you know, the traitors that he call, as he calls them, that, that are just uh, destroying the Russian military in Ukraine. Um, and he doesn't necessarily want to stop the war. He just thinks that he can prosecute it better. But look, uh, Alex, uh, the way you orchestrate successful coups is not by announcing them far in advance, especially against a state that controls the military, controls the security services, has enormous firepower. You try to do it quietly and then announce that you've been successful. So Prigozhin is doing this completely backwards, and that's why he's very likely to fail. All right. Well, thank you both for joining me uh, to break down these stunning developments. Uh, Colonel Cedric Layton, Dmitry Alperovich, uh, thanks to you both.